Hi, I'm Shannon McGratton. Welcome to the News House where we're talking to Jim Richardson, a photographer for National Geographic magazine. Jim is here at Syracuse today to talk to us about his photography career and also his work in the small town of Cuba, Kansas. So Jim, welcome to Syracuse. Good to be here. So my first question for you is how did you get a job at National Geographic magazine? <laughs> well, I worked in newspapers for a long time uh, from 1970 on and it was probably 15 years really before uh, I did that. I had done a lot of long-term projects, uh, a lot of uh, books before that, and by the time I started freelancing, I was uh, pretty well suited uh, for what National Geographic did, and, and what they did was very much in line with what I wanted to do. So what did you want to do? Longer projects, in-depth journalism, uh, National Geographic's one of the few magazines in the world that really lets uh, photographers be journalists and to, uh, to research very complex stories, to develop the uh, visual narrative, uh, and to propose stories. So probably 70% uh, of the stories that I do for National Geographic are things that I propose about issues that I care about and places uh, that I want to uh, work on. So where is the best place you've ever visited? <laughs> or what's the project that you wanted to do so badly that if they didn't give it to you, you would have been miserable. <laughs> oh, I, I think of many of those have come and gone, but uh, I keep going back to the North Atlantic and to Scotland, particularly. Um, some people would say that because I have a great uh, uh, love of single malt whiskeys, but really because I, I like the country, I like the, uh, the creativity and the energy, I like the landscape the wildness of the islands out in the Hebrides and uh, the improbable places that you find where, where people are uh, making a life for themselves. So what's the coolest thing you've shot then in, in Scotland? In Scotland? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you could, uh, you could mention any number. I suppose uh, uh, maybe when Johnny Buchanan called me up and said he was going to haul a, uh, a boatload of sheep over to his... Uh, his summer pasture up there at Barvis. And uh, so we went down there and he was loading sheep into a rowboat. And they packed in the sheep and we packed in beside them and we uh, rode over to the, uh, to the little island uh, of Pabe and, uh, and unlo unloaded the sheep. You know, that's probably, not many people get to do that. So can you describe, <laughs> I guess, a day-to-day -day life for you if, when you're on a shoot? Um, there, there's no typical day-to-day, -day, I'm afraid. It's all, it's all um, um, flying by the seat of your pants uh, to some degree and reacting. And, and as much planning and research and development as you do, there always has to be room for the serendipity and, and whatnot. But it's, they're long days. They're very long days. They're uh, usually, oh, I would say, you know, 14 to 18 hour days. And, uh, and you, People ask if my wife travels with me, and I say, no, you do not want to do that. Um, I usually, uh, people who go along with me who think they want to do this usually last about five days, and uh, then we put them on a plane and send them home. So it's, it's, a, it's very, uh, it's grueling work when you're in the field, and uh, it's just constant, and it's also constant anxiety because, um, gee, I never know if I'm in the right place doing the right thing at any, any given moment. And I'm never confident enough, like some photographers are, to, to know that they've got it. You know, photographers always are saying, yeah, I knew I had the picture. Well, I don't know that I've got the picture. And maybe that's why I, uh, I, I work it so hard. And, uh, and maybe that's why the time in the field is always uh, a, uh, a balance between ecstasy and, and, uh, and despair. So what's the most rewarding thing then at the end of the day? Oh, I think probably for me at this time in my career is, is to, take a, to take an important, complex story that, that needs telling, that needs compelling pictures to reach an audience, and to make it happen. And if I can do that, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, particularly if, they are, if it's a story that that is not going to get automatic attention. You know, I think about the story that I did on soil. Now, a lot of photographers get stories on Paris street cafes. <laughs> I get soil. <laughs> but I honestly don't know if, if I hadn't done that story, I don't know who would have taken it on and, and really tried to make it work and, um, and trying to elevate it 
from being something that we pretty much disregard at our peril, um, whereas we know we need clean water and we know we need clean air, but we don't, by and large, as a society and a, and a culture, understand how much we depend on that six to 24 inches of, of soil beneath our feet and how much we would, we would disappear from Earth if it went away. Last question is kind of quirky, but what makes you, you? What makes me, me? <laughs> yeah. What makes Jim Richardson who he is? Oh, well, I suppose it's still this, uh, it's still this, uh, this insecure farm kid uh, showing up in town and wondering if I can get along, I suppose. Uh, and, uh, and it's the, uh, the innate curiosity that I got uh, from my parents and uh, the, the, the wonderful opportunity that I had as a kid to figure out on my own that I could, uh, that I could, I could do things. And with, uh, with enough effort and enough focus, um, I could do things actually pretty well. Awesome. Well, Jim, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. That's yeah. it for the News House. We'll see you next time.